So a few days ago, uh, Chris Mitchell, the uh, bureau chief uh, here in Jerusalem for the Christian Broadcasting Network, uh, CBN News, he's been doing this more than, well, almost a, almost a quarter of a century now, and uh, he is the dean of, uh, of uh, Christian journalism, but actually I think he's served longer than any journalist in this city, and I'm so grateful. You and I had an opportunity just a few days ago mm-hmm. to go not just into Gaza, that would have been... Yeah. Uh, crazy enough uh, to go with the IDF, but into Han Yunus, the the epicenter of the most fierce fighting between Hamas and and Israel, and then into those terror tunnels. And uh, you surprised me, Um, (laughs) and I'm in a good way, Um, but I just wanted wanted to to do a a brief story on your heart and why uh, why you surprised me. And uh, just share with the people what, uh, what was on your heart. Well, Joel, I think it actually goes back to uh, the time when I went down, uh, invited by the GPO or in the, the idea press office here, right, uh, in the prime minister to office. go down and watch about a forty-five minute video of the mm-hmm. raw footage from October seventh. Yeah. And like many journalists or many people that have seen that subsequent to that, it's so riveting, it's so moving, it's so revolting, yeah. it's so horrific. And uh, so that one of the things that when I came back from that, I was driving by myself Mm -hmm. back to Jerusalem and I really felt the Lord put two words in my heart, Mm -hmm. honor them. It was so wrong what happened that day. Mm -hmm. The the, everything that we saw and we didn't see, which which Mm -hmm. is even worse. And later, a few weeks later, we had this opportunity to go down to the Nova Music Festival site that was literally a massacre where maybe almost 400 people were slaughtered Mm -hmm. and many kidnapped. And we went down there to do a story, but you know what I felt in my heart more importantly was to go down there and take communion. Mm -hmm. That land had been defiled. It had innocent blood was shed Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted in some way what we could do or what I could do, what Holy Spirit I felt led to do was take communion and pray for this land and pray for the people, the families that had loved ones that were uh, brutally murdered that day, and to help redeem the land because it had been defiled. Innocent blood was shed. The the only so other not time- just prayer because you're a prayer warrior. You and I have literally yeah, never yeah, done sure. an interview. I'm not even sure if we've had a conversation, maybe, maybe a few, but yeah. that, in which we didn't pray. And I love that your heart for prayer. Uh, I had a pastor in college uh, from India, and he was discipling and me and other students, and he used to say, "Joel, lean, we serve a prayer, hearing." and a prayer answering God, a wonder working God. Now, if you needed English to English translation like I did at the time, Joel and Lynn, we serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God, a wonder working God, a God who does miracles. And you're, you've always been a prayer warrior, but it wasn't just prayer. You wanted to take communion. You wanted to take mm-hmm. the Lord's Supper and you, as you did at that festival site, but you wanted to take it in Gaza. Yeah. Well, we had the opportunity, the rare, rare opportunity to go in and actually be there on the ground I remember uh, a saying from many years ago during the 1040 window uh, prayer movement mm-hmm. was to be on site, to pray in, with insight on site. Mm-hmm. We had the rare privilege of being there on site in Gaza yeah. that had, uh, you know, the site Very of so many battles. Of Christ. Very yeah. few reporters even get to actually exactly. go in there. And so what an opportunity. And through... Through the years, every so often I'll be in a place, I'll be like on the the border with ISIS and uh, and the allied troops, and I just get the nudge from the Holy Spirit saying, well, why did you pray? Why did you pray here? And I remember a time in Iraq saying, you know, ISIS was advancing, and I I, I just felt led, you know, God stopped them, stopped this assault. So we had that opportunity in Gaza. And uh, as soon as we came out of the tunnel, we had uh, just a few moments Mm -hmm. and uh, we had a little juice and a few crackers and uh, we were able to take communion and pray that God would redeem this Mm -hmm. land that had been so defiled. And so that that's what happened. And we had that rare opportunity to pray for the land and uh, that God would redeem what what the enemy had meant so much for evil. And we're not there to offend anybody that we're not there to to to, we just wanted to cry out to God, redeem this land. Amen. Uh, and, and in addition, I, as I was praying, as you prayed that, um, I was praying, Lord, would you break the stronghold of the satanic, yeah, um, yeah a, a satanic stronghold. That, that, that this was demon-possessed people. There's no other way. You, you can't just go in and cut off babies' heads and slaughter people. I mean, there's people, there's, there's, there's 
there's there are, there's criminality, and then and there's terror, but this was off the charts. This, this makes the Nazis look team. The burning, putting a baby in an oven and burning it in front of its parents, like the, the level of of satanic yeah. demonic yeah. activity that has controlled Gaza for all these years, but also and and not just these years, right? The Palestinian. The name comes from the Philistines. In, in Arabic, you say Palestinian, right? You don't, you know, so it, it's from the Philistines and they were slaughtering Jews and conquering nations and taking uh, and kidnapping Jews uh, from the earliest parts of the Bible. So I was, I was, I was touched. I was surprised because I, you know, we'd had this amazing, crazy day, machine gun fire, bombs bursting in the air. I mean, and being in those terror tunnels, being in cages where... Uh, Israeli hostages had just been, but when you said, hey, would you like to take communion right before we got back in the armored personnel carrier to leave, I was touched. That was that was a, a brother in Christ who's had more experience in this region and just, and the Holy Spirit just gave you a stirring, an unction, uh, let's do this. And I was grateful. I wish I'd thought of it, but I didn't need to because, yeah. because you did. And, um, you know, we didn't film it, but I think, you know, it's one of the things, you and I even have talked about it in the last few days. Like, should we share that um, mm -hmm. publicly? Because I think there's what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, right? On the one hand, he says, um, when you pray, don't go broadcasting your prayers. Yeah. Just go in a private, you know, your prayer closet, as it were, and just pray silently, secretly to the God who sees in secret. Yeah. Which means you have to have faith, right? That you're, if you're just talking to the Lord in a, uh -huh. in a dark room, yeah. you know, and you don't believe that God's really there, what's the point? But on the next page in our Bibles, it, the Lord does, Jesus does say, uh, let your light so shine before men that they'll see your good works and glorify God in heaven. So which is it, Lord? I mean, we're not trying to draw attention to ourselves. We're trying to say right, we right. had an opportunity to ask the Lord to do something yeah. big. And um, it moved me. And I was really touched yeah. that you wanted to do that. You know what I think is the lesson for us, and I think the lesson for those watching or listening is that um, we are fighting a battle of good and evil. Mm -hmm and we need to be prepared. Yeah. And the weapons of our warfare, as Paul said, are not carnal, but right. mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. And that's prayer, and that's communion, that's yeah. being in the word. And I, I get the feeling that how difficult days are now, mm -hmm. they're gonna be much harder, mm -hmm. much more difficult, and that we need to be prepared. And I was just thinking about this the day, last day or mm -hmm. so, However things, however well prepared I, I feel like I am, I'm not prepared enough. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like we need to pray. We need to, you know, be together in fellowship. We need to take communion. We need to be in the word. All of that to prepare us for the days that are coming. And I, I think that's a lesson for me and you, mm -hmm. for the body right now, oh. is really to get ready for these days that are coming. Be prepared now, mm -hmm. but, uh, but all that to uh, prepare for all the days that are coming so yeah. we can... We can be what he wants us to be for such Amen. a time as this. Amen. Two last thoughts as, as you're talking. It's, um, first, you know, being in those tunnels, being in those cages where at least 12 Israeli hostages were held, some of them recently, three had been released, yeah. but obviously had reported to the Israeli security authorities and intelligence that they had been, they didn't know where they were, yeah. I'm sure, because they'd been blindfolded going in, blindfolded out. But they said we were in these tunnels with these people. So so the Israeli intelligence knows knew that there was at least those specific people in that in that cage. But to be there, to actually be there uh was like insane and surreal and hard yeah. to process. But to be able to pray for those hostages, uh for their courage, I can't, yeah. you know, we're 100 and almost 127 days or so into this, and it's just, we're not sure if there's an end in sight. Mm -hmm. We hope there is, that's yeah. our prayer. But but to pray for them, pray for their families, pray for the liberation of, of um, the Palestinian people as well, and pray for the defeat of Hamas. I want yeah. them all as terrorists to get saved, but also arrested. Mm -hmm. um, and if they're not gonna get saved, then they probably need to be arrested and maybe worse, uh, because they're because it's evil. So that was powerful en enough in one sense to be there and be able to pray on site, as you said. But the other thing that I've been just processing in just the last few moments that we have is um, we were suited up. You know, you and I put on these uh, bulletproof, yeah. very heavy bulletproof vest, helmet. We're not, this is not our normal day job uh, look. Mm -hmm. um, 
And it goes back to Ephesians chapter 6. Like, exactly. you would never go yeah. into the worst right. fighting mm -hmm. in Gaza unless you were with people that had weapons, unless you were suited up as much as they give you to be suited up, to get in an armored personnel carrier and to go in with people who know what they're doing and are prepared. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you won't just walk in, right? And yet, in many ways, many Christians, even who love Jesus, but they— they don't realize that there, there's a roaring lion Amen. waiting to yeah. devour yeah. them, and they're just kind of going yeah. about their day, yeah. and they're not suiting up. And I think, and the only way to suit up, right, is to ask the Lord to put a, to, yeah. to, to suit us up. Yeah. And this has been a prayer that we prayed with our, our boys when they were little, like, to, mm -hmm. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. suit us up in your full armor, and open our eyes and our hearts to what you yeah. want to say through your word, through your spirit to us today, and help us to walk mm -hmm. in the spirit. Um, yeah. Uh, especially in dark days. So uh, we got, there's a lot of sermon illustrations that came out of that day, yeah. but mm -hmm. we got to leave. Exactly. We got to go home, exactly. take a shower, have mm -hmm. dinner with our family or, or yeah. colleagues, and there are people that, that are still that are not there. the case. Yeah, yeah. 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 Last words, yeah, there. last thoughts? Let's pray. Let's pray. Amen. That's, <laughs> that's Chris Mitchell, people, right there. Right there. I wasn't testing him, but amen. Please. Amen. Father, Lord, we, we just thank you that you gave us that opportunity to be where amen. very few people have the opportunity to go. We have the privilege to report on it, and we had the privilege to pray there on site, with insight, for the hostages, for their families, uh, and Lord, we had the opportunity to take communion. So, Lord, what a privilege, and Lord... We are in very, very difficult days, but Lord, we sense they may get even tougher. So we need to be prepared. So help Joel and I to be prepared. Help our colleagues to be prepared and help your body to be ready for these days, to be suited up in the armor of God and to, like the Queen Esther, we are called for such a time as this. Help us to look up for our redemption draw nigh and Lord, help us to be suited up and that we can fulfill the purpose and the plan you have for each one of us so that yes. when we see you, you'll be able to say to us, well done, mm. good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I, I want to also pray for the, for the thousand or so Christians in, in, mm. in Gaza, mm -hmm. Lord, that are holed up in several churches up in the northern part. And I'd like to go visit them if, if the IDF would let us and, and encourage them and hear their stories and, and uh, report on that if, if you would open that door. But in the meantime, Lord, we pray you would strengthen them. They are Amen. they feel like they're on an island by themselves and they are not sure they're not sure what to do next. Uh, they're they're safe at the moment, but but there's devastation all around them and pray you'd encourage your body there mm -hmm. and uh, strengthen them and let them know that you're with them, Lord, that you'll never forsake them, you'll never leave them. And finally, Lord, we pray that you would open up the hearts and minds of everybody in this land and this mm -hmm. region. Uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to be seeking spiritually, to be saying, all right, Lord, or, or, you know, it, there are many people here who don't know that there is a God, or they may be worshiping a God who isn't, and they don't know you, or they don't know you personally, and we pray that you'd reveal um, yourself, yeah. uh, you'd open eyes and hearts and show people that Jesus is the Messiah, and he is our good shepherd, and we don't want to be wandering around in this world uh, as sheep without our shepherd to protect us. There are, there are ravenous wolves waiting to devour us. So we pray that you would draw more and more of the people of this land, Jews and Arabs and others, into your kingdom, Lord, through Jesus the Messiah. Thank you for this time, and thank you for my brother Chris. Bless him, bless his family and the CBN team. I'm so grateful for them. We pray in the name of our King, our Savior, who will come to this city, Jerusalem, one day and rule and reign over the whole world. We can't wait. But in the meantime, yes, help us be faithful. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for watching and continue to track us at All Israel News and, of course, TBN on the Rosenberg Report. And, of course, uh, my colleague, the dean of all of this. God has really given some unique experience and insight, um, Chris Mitchell, on uh, CBN News and uh, Dateline Jerusalem. Jerusalem Dateline, sorry, I inverted. Uh, yeah. God bless you. Uh, thanks for watching.